Here's a slightly more complicated example involving the second derivative test. So the problem is to find all of the critical points of the function f of x, y equals x to the fifth plus y to the fourth minus 5x minus 32y minus 3. And also to try to figure out if this function has a global maximum and or a global minimum. So of course the domain is all of R2 since this function is defined everywhere. So first we calculate the partial derivatives. So fx equals 5x to the fourth minus 5 and fy equals 4y cubed minus 32. So to solve for the critical points we set fx and fy equal to 0. So fx equals 0 implies that x to the fourth equals 1. So x has to equal plus or minus 1. Of course, it could also equal plus or minus i, but we're only talking about real numbers here. Our domain is r2. And then fy equals 0 implies that y cubed equals 8. And the only real solution to that equation is y equals 2. So now there are two critical points. There's 1, 2, and minus 1, 2. Now let's figure out whether these are local minima or local maxima or neither. So we need to use the second derivative test. So we have fxx equals 20x cubed, fyy equals 12y squared, and then fx has no y in it, so fxy equals 0. So now let's analyze the critical point 1, comma 2. So d is the determinant of the matrix of partial derivatives, so I have 20 times 1 cubed, which is 20, and then the off-diagonal terms are 0, and then I have 12 times y squared, so that's uh, 12 times 4, which is 48. And this is positive, and the diagonal entries are also positive, so this is a local minimum. And now let's analyze minus 1, comma 2. So here d is now I have 20 times minus 1 cubed, which is minus 20. And the rest of the matrix is the same as before. So this determinant is negative. And so this critical point is a saddle. It's neither a local min nor a local max. Okay, now we have to think a little more and say, is there a global maximum? Is there a global minimum? Well, remember that a global maximum has to be a local maximum. And there is no local maximum because we found all of the critical points and all we found is a local minimum in a saddle. So there's no local maximum. And that tells us right away that there's no global maximum. Now what about a global minimum? So we have a local minimum, which is 1, 2. So if there's any global minimum, it has to be this point. But is this point a global minimum of the function? Well, if we look at this function, suppose we set y equals to 0. Then we have x to the fifth plus lower order terms. Now, when x is a large negative number, x to the fifth is going to be a very large negative number, much bigger in absolute value than 5x or 3. And the other terms will be 0. So by taking x sufficiently far down in the negative part of the real line, we can make f arbitrarily small. So that means we can certainly make it smaller than what it is at this point. And in fact, we can make it as small as we want. So there's no global minimum either.
but I use slightly imprecise terminology here. We'll just know that f of x0 can be arbitrarily negative. In other words, a negative number of arbitrarily large absolute value if x is sufficiently negative. We can also see that there's no global max by similar reasoning. If we set x equals to 0, then this is y to the fourth plus lower order terms. So by taking y sufficiently large, we can make f arbitrarily large. So that's another reason why there's no global max.